a very warm welcome to all of you from the CNS family. I am glad to inform you all that our health fellowship program is seven years old. <laughs> Alice, is, yes. is, isn't, that, isn't that a reason to celebrate? We started. I'm old. <laughs> this is amazing. Yeah, we started with this in 2011, and yes. now today I'm to, I'm today welcoming the eighth batch of fellows. Oh, wow! So, so uh, we go we go on proceed start proceeding now, and uh, we would like to share and reinforce some of CNS's core beliefs and values. Uh, why do we do what we do? That is important for all of us to know. Hello, welcome everyone. This is uh, Bobby here. And uh, uh, I think this is a great reminder, uh, a compass, which we should always keep in mind when we are, uh, you know, when we are contributing to, uh, uh, to not only about health, but also other issues, which was given by Gandhi. And he said that there is a sufficiency in the world for humans need, but not for, uh, you know, everyone's greed. For or for a human beings greed and uh, there is another very important compass which we often use can I have the next slide please is also from Gandhi and basically he said that he gave us a talisma that whenever you are in doubt or when the self becomes too much with you apply the following test Mahatma Gandhi said that recall the face of the poorest and the weakest person whom you may have seen and ask yourself if the step you contemplate is going to be of any use to that person. Will he or she gain anything by it? Will it restore her or him to a control over his or her own life and destiny? In other words, will it lead to Swaraj? Swaraj was freedom for the hungry and spiritually starving millions. And then you will find your doubts and yourself melt away. And this is a very important talisma or the thumb rule of Mahatma Gandhi. And it is very sad that uh, our policy makers, though our decision makers, probably are not using it. And if they were using this talisma, then we will not have policies which are only benefiting the rich, the powerful. And uh, one of the uh, proof of this is the recent uh, reports that uh, in the last year, uh, even for fewer people, own more wealth than ever before. So basically, it also means that poor have become poorer and rich are becoming richer. We see environmental degradation. We see more homelessness. We see, uh, you know, the tuberculosis rates are not declining, for example, at that level. Uh, on the other hand, it is very difficult to hold corporations to account uh, for, their, for the human right abuses and environmental damage which they do. And uh, there are several examples in your own countries you will find. In my country, I can give you an example of Bhopal gas tragedy, which happened in early 80s. And Union Carbide is still, still uh, you know, scot-free. And uh, so this is a very important framework which we always keep in mind. Uh, this was, uh, we, we got uh, inspired by this from Asia Pacific Forum on Women, Law and Development. This is a forum on development justice for all. Basically, it means uh, that, you know, health justice, uh, justice in terms of gender, justice in terms of climate, environment, justice in terms of social equity, justice in terms of economic justice and redistributive justice, where no one holds huge amount of power, human, huge, huge amount of natural resources, huge amount of wealth, uh, and um, you know, rest of the human population is deprived of it. So, basic, so essentially, each of these is inalienable. We can't separate it. So for example, we cannot rid, eliminate tuberculosis, but it is uh, without eliminating malnutrition, homelessness, hygiene, water and sanitation, taking care of nutrition, diabetes, non-communicable diseases, so many other, uh, you know, uh, social determinants, commercial determinants, which influence the elimination of tuberculosis. And same goes for malnutrition. We cannot reduce malnutrition unless we address redistributive justice, economic justice, uh, climate justice. Imagine the one lung air pollution, for instance, is very recently being recognized as a dangerous uh, contributor to our lung health. Uh, number of lung cancers, for instance, is, is very alarming, probably more than what tobacco causes. But at the same time, are we really doing anything to protect our air? 
actually the reality is we every single day we add new cars on the road new motorcycles on the road new factories on the road we at in some countries we find the policies are being diluted for environmental uh, safeguards so one of the important things for me personally and i will really encourage you all also to keep this in mind that all these uh, or the, you know if we want development justice for everyone where no one is left behind especially the people who are poorest of the poor especially the the last people in the queue health is integrated with several other components for instance gender climate social economic redistributive and you will find several other commercial and uh, social determinants in your own communities and uh, and in your own contexts and here we have a, a positive uh, sign that our governments in 2015 governments of 193 countries and probably it includes countries each of the countries from you all come from i come from uh, is that they adopted a sustainable development goals they committed themselves to 17 goals and they also committed that each of these goals are integrated with each other so sustainable development goals so we cannot deliver on health for example sdg 3 unless we uh, you know uh, deliver on other 16 goals so all this progress on all the 17 goals is interdependent on each other which is so true which is so true so is glad that our governments have committed now the challenge is are is health ministry for instance in my country in your country working in collaboration and close collaboration and partnership with other ministries or is health ministry working in silo many a times we find it is working in silo so we really need to make sure that you know people start thinking about integrated development in this context otherwise we are not going to meet these goals we can't deliver on 1 2 4 5 we can't pick and choose we need to progress make progress on each of these 17 goals for a sustainable development uh, where no one is left behind and is glad that governments are chanting this mantra of where no one is left behind and they need to walk the talk next slide please so this is a photograph from uh, Sh uh, shobha madam who was just speaking cns managing editor she was at the un high level uh, meeting on uh, tuberculosis uh, last month where heads of states were supposed to come so they were talking about ntb and i like this uh, photograph because you see ntb goal is surrounded dependent totally dependent on all the remaining other sdgs it's extremely important maybe we see a direct correlation maybe we don't see a direct correlation but if we go in depth you will find that there is a direct correlation between each of those 17 sdgs so either we make progress on each one of them or we are really going to you know fail um, on probably all next slide please and this is a uh, very important i will i will uh, you know uh, instead of uh, saying much i will rather let me show it show some stuff to you here's to the crazy ones the misfits the rebels the trouble makers the round pegs in the square holes the ones who see things differently they are not fond of rules and they have no respect for the status quo you can quote them disagree with them glorify or vilify them about the only thing you can do is ignore them because they change things they push the human race forward and while some may see them as the crazy ones we see genius because the people who are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones who do coming back to the bimla misra memorial health fellowship program that's why the the thing here is be different we need to be be different the we need to speak what truly matters we need to remember what's at stake we cannot let our governments go back on the promises they have made for sustainable development where no one is left behind we need to make sure we progress on health and each of the other sdgs we need to make sure that we we are moving towards a better world for everyone for each one of us and it's not only a, a, a social commitment but also a personal commitment we want a better world for you me our families our loved ones as well as everyone each one of us there is no way we can have a better world for only a few 
that is not a sustainable development it's only going to uh, go take us in a different direction and this is in the g- genesis of the bimla mesra memorial health fellowship program so that we can focus on global health priorities but also in context of uh, of of everything which truly matters to the people who are most in need and with this i will hand it back to shubha ma'am uh thank you bobby uh, again so i would request all of you to be crazy enough to contribute your might and your bit to change the world to be a better place for all of us uh, i will quickly give you an overview now of this uh, bimla misra memorial fellowship yes so you must be seeing on your screens but i think each of these points is very important the main the basic process and structure of the fellowship is that cns would be holding at least one webinar every month so, so over the period of one year there will be 12 or more webinars held as part of e learning sessions on current global health and development priorities each fellow is expected to contribute at least 10 articles per year the more the better but at least 10 articles based on these webinar webinars and e learning sessions and then a certificate is awarded upon successful completion of the fellowship next slide please now certain points about how do we write we we all evolve as Uh, writers and journalists and the way we present our point of view so when you are framing a story you yourself individual in your own individual capacities you are the best judge of what should be the best flow to tell the story impactfully but please remember that it should not be an opinionated blog post nor a transcription of the webinar recording the webinar recording is always sent to you in case for some reason you were not able to hear it even if you are hearing it we will send it to you it's there in the public domain once the webinar is over but you are not transcribing the webinar the next slide please the webinar and whatever is tr- uh, said in the webinar and your active participation is the first important step for you to develop your article it is just helping you towards that goal because you are getting the opportunity of interacting with the specialists in that particular field and area and asking relevant questions from the webinar panel of experts if you send your questions in advance or during the webinar we always try to prioritize the questions sent by the fellows over those of other webinar participants sometimes due to shortage of time all questions could cannot be taken up you are free to write directly to the pan, to the pa, uh, panel of experts uh, to satisfy your queries hello yes uh, who was that hello okay next slide please there can be several possible story angles for your article based upon the theme of a specific webinar which is more relevant to your country context so for example there is a, a webinar on tuberculosis and how it is affecting maybe various uh, groups communities classes uh, somebody may like to focus on web, uh, tuberculosis in children somebody may like to talk about the stigma accept of uh, aspect of hello. tuberculosis how hello. it is impact yes hello hello yeah we can hear i i can hear somebody's voice but perhaps she is not able to hear us so uh, and I'm, i just want to let you all know that this session is being streamed live on cns facebook page and uh, they can see us there at www.facebook.com uh, for cns page so there can be several just let me continue with how we are going how you are going to shape an article 
so you can choose one storyline we can help you with this if there is need for that and the storyline you will choose once you have participated in the webinar and also received its video recording and podcast the next slide please your article could be approximately 700 to 1000 words and it should include at least one or more comments from the experts who were there at the webinar panel which are relevant for your story because since each one would be pursuing a different story line some comment would be relevant for them then we encourage that you have inputs your article includes inputs from interviews you conduct at your level with a member of the affected community and or some local regional expert uh, maybe the expert is from your play from your city town or at the national level uh, it, that is left to you but it, because a good article should incorporate uh, a diverse point of view the panelists have given you presented their views and they have presented facts there the community or a person who are affected by that problem would be having i think and uh, for us uh, the role of the community is very important and input from the community is very very important because they are the ones from whom we can really seek the solutions to the problems and then the local regional or national experts because uh, the problems in different countries regarding the same issues would be could be different and are likely to be different from those of other regions you may also quote some relevant data from dependable sources uh, like government websites who website uh, we are saying dependable and and of course you need to give a catchy uh, title to your article because that is the first thing which catches the attention of the reader uh, next slide please Uh, now uh, we i am not being very pedantic or uh, here but uh, still we try to remember certain things uh, while writing an article and all of us learn every year and with every passing day what to include what not to include what to avoid uh, but there are certain very specific rules if you are quoting any art study or article if you are giving quoting it in your article please give the web link of that and it should be from a reliable source uh, it's just not enough to say according to one study we we have this data which was that study it is important so please give the link to that study or to that data which you are giving please give the correct names and designations of experts who are quoted in your article you can send photos to go with your article but please mention the source of it so that there are no copyright issues if you have taken it you can just mention that that photograph was taken by you or if you have taken it from somewhere else make sure that you are able to that there are no copyright issues there and uh, you are permitted to use that photo and of course all of us tend to go wrong in spellings and and make grammatical errors but we try to avoid that as far as possible the do not here the do, the two do nots which we have here are also very important for cns and i think it would be they would be important for you we do not give actual names of community members while quoting them in the article just to protect their confidentiality we also avoid clicking direct photographs of community members unless you seek permission from them because there are many other ways where you can take the photograph without showing the face and still it could be a, it would be a very powerful photograph so just remember that we have to respect their confidentiality that is important for us we also refrain from using inappropriate terms which may seem to be very common in our day to day languages like we like saying drug addict now the word addict doesn't sound very good or a defaulter you know these are 
these are sort of accusatory terms and we are accusing the person a defaulter a, TB, a defaulter of treatment in tb as if that person has committed a crime they they could be i'm not uh, we are not supporting that a person should not complete the tb treatment say for example i'm taking the example of tb but using the term defaulter it is not polite if even we if we even we commonly say he is a he or she is a diabetic i think it's more proper to say a person living with diabetes again saying tb suspect now suspect you know that word suspect we always sort of link it to crime so it's it's better to say presumptive tb patient or a presumptive tb case also another very commonly used word which we at cns avoid at all causes clinical trials when we say it's better to say a clinical study because what does a trial what picture does the word trial bring to your mind as if it's a court case and there is a trial going on in the court these may seem very small and innocuous things but i think they mean a lot and we need to be very sensitive to the use of certain words and vocabulary which we do in our daily lives next slide please okay now uh, i think that is enough we'll have a question and answer session later on where you can uh, ask your uh, get your problem solved or ask questions or get clarifications now let us get to know each other and before we get to know each other i would invite one of our past fellows elise who is really consented to be here with us and i am very grateful to elise for that and elise i would like you to share some of your experiences as a fellow of this health uh, in the uh, uh, as a as part of this health fellowship program over to you elise now hi thank you very much um good afternoon everybody for me afternoon yes, yes we are from different parts from the world so that's that's okay yes <laughs> yes for me it's an afternoon um yes. i i i'm really happy to be here and i'm excited for all you guys who are starting this year i am one of the 2011 uh, so i feel quite old it's been 7 years already um but i've been asked to share a little bit of my experience um as a fellow in this program and before i do that i just want to share with you two things that were very critical to me and why i joined the fellowship program the first thing is that the platform offered me an opportunity to sharpen my writing skills it offered me an opportunity to publish internationally which is something that is very difficult for a lot of people um and then the third thing on that one is to network with like minded academics and professionals and for most of us we find ourselves stuck uh, behind a desk do work and we never actually interact with people who are who are like minded and over a few years you start becoming stale uh, but this forum has opened up a platform where you can actually interact with people who are who have same interests as you and want to change um the agenda in the same area where you're working um and then you have an opportunity to world the, to to influence the world agenda How many times do we get to do that? Um, so in this fellowship program, you are getting a chance to be on a, on a platform that gives you a whole lot of opportunities that most people do not get. And then the last thing is, well, the package comes with a, an opportunity to travel and attend conferences, uh, to grow your career, and some some may be doctors or public health specialists like me. Uh, some could be you know from different backgrounds but you never know you had um a talent you never explored in writing and publishing and this is a platform that can give you that chance to explore it uh, with guidance um and you know the opportunity to publish um and 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 lastly a chance to be heard if you work in the trenches all the time and you're trying to make a difference there's a lots of frustrations especially when you feel that the decisions are being made are not helping you to do your work here you find yourself with an opportunity to actually be heard so when you write your article you're bringing together thoughts and opinions and research 
and, and, and concepts together in one document and you are allowed to publish it internationally and help others to change their agenda, to change the mindset. And the last quote I will give you is that the brain of anyone, a leader, a person anyway, will make decisions based on the information they've been exposed to. And until some people like you guys today, who are fellows in this program, write out some information out there and put it out there and give people new information, you might actually change the way people make decisions. So um, take charge and utilize this platform and opportunity and influence the world agenda. All the best. Thank you very much, Elise. Uh, yes. And uh, all, all our past fellows, their writings are on our website. And you all can go and check what Elise has written and how she has contributed for a better world for all of us. And uh, she was one of the <laughs> earliest fellows and she still continues because uh, to write for CNS and write for other, uh, uh, on other platforms as well. So once you are a family member of, a member of the CNS family, you are always a member of that family. You always remain a member. A family never disintegrates. And uh, now I would uh, like uh, our new fellows to please introduce themselves briefly one after the other. And uh, we have just arranged that list in alphabetical order because each one is equally important to us. So we have just arranged the names in the alphabetical order of their first names. So Amiti happens to be the Amiti Varma from India because her name begins with A, so, so there she is. So I would like Amiti to please introduce herself. Um, uh, hi everyone. Uh, Great. Uh, so I'm the first one to begin. Um, so I am really excited and happy to be accepted part of this program. And like as Alice has said, thank you so much for that um, introduction to the program. It's been really helpful. I think I am keen to do this to improve my writing skills and have uh, a structure to regularly, regularly write. I have a background in psychology, but I am interested in global public health issues. And I think this is a great opportunity also to engage with things that I wouldn't have actually engaged with like TB and tobacco, which with my psychology training didn't really come in. Uh, so I'm really excited to be a part of this fellowship program. Uh, Anything thank, else? You know, thank you, Amiti. Looking okay. forward to uh, reading your writings. Uh, next is Avantika Chaturvedi. If Avantika is there. Yes, Avantika, are you there? I, I think Avantika has not been able to join or maybe sometimes they have some technical issues. So uh, Avantika had written that she's currently working as an educational counselor in a college in India. Uh, she has a master's in psychology and has been associated with issues like mental health, gender, sexuality, and education particularly of the lower, uh, people of lower economic stata, uh, status. Uh, she has written for, she has been writing for CNS also in the past. Uh, next we have Beryl. So uh, Beryl is a, uh, a graduate of journalism and media studies from the University of Nairobi and currently doing her master's in communication development from the same university. She is passionate about writing on development issues. Uh, she has worked with uh, projects uh, as, a on pro as a global grant accessor. She is a mentor at the Akili Dada Foundation 
which helps young girls from underprivileged backgrounds to overcome their fears uh, and uh, to help them rise to leadership positions. Uh, then we have Equi. Now some of our participants are they are having some technical troubles due to uh, poor internet connection at their end or they were not able to hear. So uh, Equi, uh, are you able to be with us now? Some of them are saying that they are having trouble connecting. Uh, Equi was not able to hear us earlier, some others also. Uh, Ekvi is a multimedia journalist uh, who has a passion for ending rural poverty, drug abuse and stigma, uh, especially in children, youth and women. Uh, she has a master's in mass communication and is the founder of Balm for the Bruised Foundation, which is an NGO that works for people with drug challenges. Uh, Joseph is your uh, technical problem solved now. Joseph was facing some problems. Just waiting if we can hear him. It, so actually, I am reading out brief bios of uh, those who who are there here at the webinar, but they are uh, they are facing some technical issues at their end. Joseph is a, a senior Ugandan journalist who holds a Master of Science uh, in Mo Monitoring and Evaluation and a Diploma in Journalism and Mass Communication. He uh, has reported for both local and international media and worked for Radio Netherlands Worldwide. He has also worked for the Institute for War and Peace Reporting, Uganda Radio Network, and currently runs a journalism fact-checking website, Reality Check Uganda. Then uh, we have Manjari Peris from Sri Lanka, uh, who is a freelance journalist uh, and believes in engaging her media skills to advance development issues. And she is very passionate about tobacco control. And she's involved in monitoring the enforcement of tobacco control policies <coughs> excuse me, in Sri Lanka, work, works very closely with policymakers, and has close affiliation with the National Tobacco Control Authority, Ministry of Health, Sri Lanka. Uh, she has authored several books on tobacco-related issues, including translation of the FCTC provisions and tobacco-related books of Professor David Simpson of UK. Then we have Moeko Portia Moedi, who has worked as a community health worker for seven years and is now working with TB Proof, an organization in South Africa which cares for the sick and the vulnerable, especially those living with HIV. Then we have Odogbu Emeka, who's a social media entrepreneur. Uh, are you there? Odogbu, are you there? There's some problem at his end also, I think. Uh, he has been, uh, he's a med social media entrepreneur, blogger, writer, journalist, and an editor and has worked with different media organizations, including the Champion Newspapers, Nigerian Pilot, The Nation, among others. And currently, he's working with the Authority Newspaper and is editor in charge of the Southeast Zone. Then we have Prachi Sharma from India. Prachi, I think we should be able to hear you. Yes. Can you able to hear me? Yes, very well. Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, first and foremost, I would like to say thanks for giving me this opportunity. And after listening Alice, it's really a great opportunity to sharpen my writing skills also. So academically, I have, uh, uh, I have a background in mass like uh, political science and uh, just completed my diploma in journalism. 
So since I'm working in the, you know, with International Union Against Tuberculosis and Lung Disease, so frequently I have been getting the chance to go in the field and have the interviews of the community workers who are really working hard to make their voice heard. So really looking forward to, thanks a lot. Okay, uh, thank you Prachi. Uh, then, Ronel, are you there? Ronel Supal from South Africa? Hi, Shubhani. Hi. Hi. Yes, Ronel. So, we would like to hear something about you, please. Um, okay. Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm from South Africa. I live in Cape Town. Um, and I, my background is in statistics and uh, public health research. And I currently work as a public health researcher at a, at a company in, uh, in Cape Town. Um, thank you very much for for this opportunity because I think as Alice mentioned it will give you know It will give us a lot of opportunity to network and uh, get exposure and Yeah, be able to influence influence the way people think and and yeah, thank you Okay, thank you uh, and then we have uh, uh, Sukolule Nepa from Zimbabwe uh, she has a bachelor's degree in media and society studies from Midland State University and works as a journalist writing for the Alpha Media Holdings and Radio BOP. And she wants to enhance her writing skills to become a better community journalist working for the welfare of the community. So this was our team of the current batch of fellows. And if there are any uh, questions or any clarifications, uh, you can uh, type in your questions. You can press the Q&A button or you can uh, raise the virtual hand you see. And uh, even later on, if you have some, any problem or any clarification, please feel free to interact with us via email. But uh, as of now, if there are any questions or doubts, uh, we'll be happy to clear them away. So you, you can type in your questions maybe or ask. Just raise the hand which you are seeing. Okay, so no open questions. Okay, that's great. But we are there now. As I said, we are a family. Yeah. And... Uh, we share each other's concerns and we try to solve them without treading upon each other's toes. And, and sometimes if you do feel that, please forgive us for that. Uh, I have a question. Yes. Okay. Uh, so I was wondering about the um, mentorship and writing skills part of this uh, fellowship. And I was wondering how exactly uh, the editing and mentorship would work. Is is that a valid question? Did you understand my question? No, no. Yes, yes. Means uh, because uh, I think we have given uh, the basic points or the structure of how your article or story should go. I think that has been discussed. Yes. And uh, if if there is if there is an editorial note to it, or when you send us the article, then okay. then then we the whatever comes from the editorial desk that is related back to you. That this is what we this this could be a change or this is or we want to clarify something very often it has happened like from past experience i can say that sometimes a, uh, it is just said according to a study or according to data uh, without us having uh, the link to that study or what is the study we are talking about that that has been one of our past experiences and that is why we have requested that you please give the link to that study or from wherever you are quoting so uh, anything which uh, which we feel that will be conveyed back to you so that you can restructure it if at all that need is and if you have any problem as i said sometimes if you have a problem in choosing a storyline we can help you there although that is your prerogative but it should somehow relate to the theme of the webinar because that is the purpose that is one of the main purposes we are holding the webinar to help you focus on certain specific issues which we think and we would like you to think also are very important for development justice. Okay, sure. That's really helpful. Thank you. Okay. Uh, and as I said, please feel free to ask via email. 
we try to be as prompt as possible but sometimes uh, forgive us if for due to some reason uh, the editorial team is busy or there is a slight delay but we, we try to avoid delays as far as possible and we get back to you immediately uh, okay but uh, i would now like rahul to show himself to the new cns family members yes rahul the floor is yours now hello uh, hello everyone uh, thanks ma'am uh, uh, i welcome you all and i thank you all for joining us today uh, and uh, 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 i will be looking forward to interacting you and helping you in developing articles as uh, discussed by and uh, and uh, it's over madam and uh, um, uh, i would like to i would, I would feel happy that, to share with you all that uh, cns is going to uh, and next webinar on probably 16th of uh, october so that would be technically your first webinar as cns fellow so looking forward to helping you all uh, with you as you uh, come up with a uh, specific theme related to your article and i will send you and sharing you the details of the webinar thank you all okay thanks to everyone thanks for being there and please uh, lock your date save your date for 16th october same time 1 pm geneva time we will be having uh, our next webinar and as rahul said for you technically the first web uh, first webinar for the fellowship program okay have a good day thank you bye bye bye, bye. bye. bye alice bye hello bye rahul